I'm continuing my video series on the fake history of Seattle. This is part 3, the final part. If you feel like you've missed anything, check out the previous videos, the links are in the description. I recommend watching them all, to get the full picture. I hope you don't get bored. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. In the previous video, I discussed how the Great Seattle Fire of 1889 mirrored similar events in cities like Chicago, San Francisco, and Melbourne, where fires were used to erase the old world. Newspapers of the time described the city burning, but didn't explain how it was built. Some of the grand architecture, supposedly constructed for the 1909 exposition, was likely excavated rather than built for the event, and then destroyed to erase memories of the old world. This pattern of destruction continued through the 20th century communist revolutions, which aimed to wipe out the past and create a new world order. The connection between Native Americans, Tartarians, and Mongolians is suggested by shared symbols, like the swastika, and physical similarities. Thousands of newspaper mentions of excavations in Seattle reveal that much of the city was excavated, not built, as shown by the lack of vegetation on freshly exposed dirt. The snippet also uses the word grading. This word means the leveling of an area through the removal of hills, elevations and dirt, or the addition of such. Despite the small population and limited resources, the city supposedly constructed large buildings, which seems impossible given the era's constraints. Now, if it had been built, we'd know when, how, where, who built the city. This is a bird's eye view of the exposition. The poster tells us this is an authorized view. I wonder what the unauthorized ones look like. Today, the area is the campus of University of Washington. I haven't taken time to look into this, but I have a hunch that not all buildings were removed from the expo, and some of them are now parts of the university campus. Because 99% of the people believe whatever they are told by the authorities, it would have been very easy to repurpose the buildings. This is the expo. But we don't even need the alleged expo built buildings to prove a point. This is the old Seattle Public Library. It was said to have been built in two years, completed in 1906, but I found no construction plans or photos. And, who built all this? And this? The census counts 3,500 people in 1880. That's an impressive amount of schools for what wouldn't be more than a few hundred kids. This is the city of Tacoma in the 1893. The building on the left is topped by griffin statues. The left building has arched entrances. All built by those horse and carriage riding, lasso waving, wooden church building cowboys. For contrast, this is how settlers actually built their houses. Seattle, 1860. Also, this is Tacoma in 1893. The scene, in and of itself, is nothing special. Until you realize that thousands of towns across the Wild West look like this. Who built it all? Why does it look so very unlike the wooden shed style they normally used? By the way, old Tacoma looks like medieval Europe. Let's have a look at Olympia, the capital of Washington Territory since 1853. The Capitol building, allegedly built in the late between 1911 and 1928. The old Capitol building of Olympia, supposedly built in 1892, just like hundreds of thousands of other buildings that also happened to be built in 1892, what a year that must have been. The Giza pyramids are nothing in comparison to thousands of buildings like this within just a few years. Other photos show that the building may have been larger at one time. If it makes little sense to you that one Capitol was built in 1892 and then another one built a few years later, I'm with you. To be fair, there are construction photos of the newer Capitol building. But I found none of any other grand buildings. The tower of the old Capitol caught fire in 1928 and had to be removed. The post office of Olympia is exactly what you'd expect from the outermost frontiers of the Wild West, is it not? Contrast this with the first schoolhouse built in Olympia in 1852. They were barely capable of building a house with a level roof or even unit-sized windows. And these same settlers also built the Greek-style superstructures. 
alternative history researchers have wondered about the large mental asylums around these places in the 1800s. There were several around Seattle, Tacoma and Olympia. Is this where they locked people up if that didn't buy into the historical lies? Another oddity of the 1800s is that we saw more secret societies and fraternities than ever before or after. I've already mentioned the Arctic Brotherhood which had a chapter in every gold mining location of the West. The West we keep talking about, by the way, is the place where population density suddenly drops due to the arid desert lands of these formerly fertile places. Another example of hundreds is a secret society called E. Clampus Vitus. I quote Wikipedia. The ancient and honorable order of E. Clampus Vitus, or ECV, is a fraternal organization dedicated to the preservation of the heritage of the American West, especially the history of the mother load and gold mining regions of the area. When a stranger came to town, clampers would inform him that to do business in the town, it was essential to join the local secret society. Why are secret societies overseeing gold mining? The mid-1800s saw all these gold rushes, and then, just like that, they all subsided and never came back. How probable is that? More likely, we aren't looking at gold rushes, but rather, massive excavation projects and lootings from the buried old world. Hence, the need for all these secretive oath-swearing consequence-threatening secret clubs. Check out this magnificent 1903 postcard of Olympia. It tells us that the new state capital is what Wikipedia calls the old state capital. Across from it to the right, there is another massive building. What is it? I checked on Google Maps and find it's at the same location that the capital building would be built and completed decades later. See the two red pins here. Something was already there in 1905. So, perhaps, the capital wasn't built when they said it was, and the construction photos I found are merely photos of additions being built, or refurbishments. The postcard also reveals that a building with four stone columns, the Masonic Temple, was built in 1852. An example of just how quickly a secret society was established in Olympia. Seriously? Olympia was barely established or populated in 1852, according to historians, but there's already a secret society operating. I find the word Freemasons intriguing in the context of the worldwide post-flood excavation. A mason is someone who builds buildings. But what is a Freemason? Someone who lets buildings magically appear by freeing them from the dirt and mud. Was that the real purpose of all these lodges that sprang up in the 1800s? The postcard also shows an odd fellows hall, yet another secret society. We're looking at a place that had no more than a few hundred inhabitants, but I already count four secret societies without even actively having looked for them. I have no doubt there are more. There must have been a lot to keep secret in the Wild West. Knowledge dissemination relies on you. Share this video far and wide.